if I only worked out when I felt good, I'd be a fat f- because there's a lot of days I don't want to do it. If nobody ever punches you in the face, you don't really appreciate safety. Because mm-hmm. a lot of people don't even understand what safety is. Some people really love their life to sit around and fuck off. When I sit around and fuck off, I don't like me. Hello, Believe Nation. I'm Evan Carmichael. My one word is believe, and I believe that entrepreneurs are going to solve all of the major problems of the world. So to help you on your journey, today we're going to learn from commentator and podcast host Joe Rogan and my take on his top 10 rules for success, volume two. Rule number three is my personal favorite, and I'd love to know which one you guys like the best. And as always, guys, as you're watching, if you hear something that really resonates with you, please leave it down in the comments below, put quotes around it so other people can be inspired, and when you write it down, it's much more likely to stick for yourself as well. Enjoy. The one thing that discipline definitely does help you with is it helps you get things done. And when you get things done, when you, you, you actually do things, you, 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 you have more success. If you have more success, and sometimes a, a big part of success is just not being f- lazy and just doing it. Yeah. Just get, that's like 90% of it is just showing up. Get there and start working. Like, you're not going to feel perfect every day. If I felt, if I only worked out when I felt good, I'd be a fat f- because there's a lot of days I don't want to do it. I mean, it's pretty much the same with everybody that if, that actually gets good at something. That you you get there's got to be those days you push through, and they're they're probably going to be more numerous than the days you don't. And so the benefit of discipline in my eyes has always been that through discipline I get things done. Yeah. I always tell my I always say that I'm like the most lazy disciplined person I know because I don't want to do it. Yeah, but I always do. Write it down. Yeah. Write down everything you want to do. I, I don't mean crazy shit. Like, I'm going to be the Prince of Brunei. I'm going to have a base in the moon. Shut up. This is what I want you to do. Write, write down what you would like to fix about your life. And then just, if you're 30 pounds overweight, you want to lose 30 pounds? Do it the right way. Go st- start eating vegetables. Monitor your calories. Write down what you eat. Exercise every day. Force yourself to do it. Say, you're the a general. The brain is the general. The troops are the body. The troops don't want to listen, but you go, f- you, you listen, and you get up and you do it, and then you get to write it down. And if you don't write it down, you don't eat, you don't f- you don't <laughs> you don't shower. Write that sh- down so you do it. It's like brushing your teeth. It's not something I don't want to brush my teeth today. Uh, you, what do you want your teeth to rot out of your head? You f- dunce. Just do it. Just do it. Make yourself do it. And if you do that, if you write sh- down and do that, you can change who the f- you are. Our bodies, for whatever reason. Uh, most people, their associations are to avoid anything that's uncomfortable. But it's so illogical because when you look at comfort and you look at success and progress and the eventual, the feelings of accomplishment and of getting past certain hurdles in, in terms of like how you feel about life, a, a lot of those are connected to discomfort. Like discomfort is your friend. It really is. Like discomfort and, uh, and not being happy and content with certain situations in life or certain feelings in life, they're massive, massive motivators and they're, they're amazing at, at facilitating change and yet are instinct is to avoid those and just sit on the couch and watch some reality show about dudes who make moonshine with our jaw open like it's it's bizarre because a lot of artists and comics um i I, I bet musicians as well but we're writers for sure one of the big problems is sitting down and doing the work Mm -hmm. and you you gotta and pressfield talks about that in, in the most concise and beautiful way and he labels it like an enemy he calls it resistance mm-hmm. you know and that you have to sit down and you have to overcome resistance and that the pro goes to work and it doesn't matter if you're sick doesn't matter if you have kids it doesn't matter what you you're a pro and you go to work and that and that just it puts it in your head that this is what I do. This is what, and you have pride in that. And then when you are in front of that keyboard and you're, you're, you got, you look down the count, it says, I got a, f- a thousand words today. I put a thousand words in. And you, you know, and yeah. you, you, you're doing the work. Yeah. And out of that work, gems blossom. Yeah. Little things, but you might have a day where you just write nothing but dog sh- so what show up again tomorrow and tomorrow out of that dog a flower will emerge you never know and that's the only way to develop 
real, like to, to really develop your potential 100% in anything. If I look back on anything I've ever done, mistakes I've ever made, um, paths that I, you know, something that I put out that I didn't quite think, man, maybe I just waited three months before I released that, or maybe I should have, you know, re-edited that blog post a couple more times before I put it online, or those things drive me crazy. Mm -hmm. but, but things that I've done have dr driven me crazy, but yelling at someone I didn't have to yell at them for, whatever. But the, m the most important thing is always for all people to recognize that you're not who you were a year ago. You're not who you were five years ago. You're not who you were last week. You're who you are now, and this is the only sh you have control over. So you got to regulate how much you dwell on regrets of the past. You really yeah, yeah. got to be careful because it's good to have a little. Because my regrets, whether it's things of professional nature or the very few regrets friendship-wise, which is one thing that makes me very happy, um, but you know, there's, there's, life is strange. There's a lot going on. There's, there's a lot of factors happening in life, but for sure who I am now wouldn't have ever happened if I didn't fuck up. If I didn't make those mistakes, I wouldn't have understand the importance no of friendship and kindness. And if I di hadn't been cruel at some point in my life or someone hadn't been cruel to me, I wouldn't understand the beauty of love. I, I would have to, I wouldn't understand the full range of it because I hadn't felt the sting. If nobody ever punches you in the face, you don't really appreciate safety. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people don't even understand what safety is. You put, oh, we're safe, we're safe. But you are so not safe at any moment. You know, and when someone's punched you in the face a bunch of times and you've been in a street fight with some guy you barely knew, you got in an argument with, there's something about regular safety that's sweeter. Yeah. It's more delicious. Yeah. It's more delicious. It's, it's way better to drive your car straight after you almost lost control on a turn. You're like, Wah! and then you get back straight, you're like, whoa. For sure. I'm not saying that you should go sideways around corners, but what I am saying is that there's a fing yin and a yang to this world, man. And, you got to fuel yourself with the fuck ups and most people get stuck in these patterns because they define themselves as a fuck up or they define themselves as a person who doesn't follow through on their ideas or a person who doesn't pursue their real interests and loves. You define yourself by that. Well, you know, I guess well, when I start things and I quit. No, you don't. No, you have started things and you quit and it gives you a horrible sense of regret that's made you define yourself by that. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. Your life would feel better and richer if you had a goal, you chase that goal, you accomplish some things, you would get this boost of confidence, you'd get this boost of self-esteem, like whatever it is that you're into doing. Maybe you're into drawing comic books, maybe yeah. you're into uh, making f pottery or sculptures, or who, but find whatever the f that is and pursue that instead of doing nothing. Like the people that are doing nothing, those are the real people. I mean, Look, doing something might be as simple as like that Alex Honnold guy. He just climbs rocks, but he's world-class rock climber. Though. It's something. I get to where I have to tell people things that are true that are even embarrassing about me now because it's like it's so weird. You can feel the energy. You guys want to talk about that? Because, I mean, you brought this up. Elaborate on how strength, because few know this. Few get to talk hours a day in front of people and then learn that it becomes a real relationship. Well, yeah, it, it definitely does. And you know what else is? You, you, God damn, you learn so much from those people, man. You know, even people who are, uh, who are critical, like they send you a link to correct you, like this is the real information, and you have the inaccurate information. Like, if you don't have an ego about all that if you could deal with the fact that you might be wrong or you might there might be you might have jumped to a conclusion there might be many possible scenarios a giant thing you tank. yeah you learn so much from people on twitter man uh, you know a lot of people will complain about like negative things on twitter i don't get that much negative on Twitter, but I occasionally get like, "Yo, I'm gonna punch you in your face if I yeah. see you, faggot." Yeah. You know? but well, even maybe the negative it might not even be grab that. like something from some of the negative stuff. Like even if there's like a ton of negative, <sighs> usually there's like a one percent truth to it. Yeah, that yeah, one yeah, yeah. percent will kind of stick in that back of your head where you're like, "All right." And he took it to like the next level, but I do understand that 1% of what yeah. he's talking about. Yeah, you can get a hater who's like 90% hater, but 10% has a point. You. It does help yes, you. I, I really know. believe it. It's a terrible feeling, that feeling when someone's hating on you, but I find it very beneficial. Yeah. Because for two reasons. One, because it's like snake venom. Because like if you yeah. get bit by a rattlesnake and you've ever been bit by a rattlesnake before, it will 
fuck you up. Like someone who has never been famous and then all of a sudden decides to do a reality show and then they get all these insults hurled at them from every direction online, that has gotta be horrific. That's just gonna be torturous. But when you take a little bit of hate venom and a little bit of hate venom, then you develop an immunity to it. You kinda understand what it is. It becomes enjoyable. Well, then it becomes a checking mechanism, and I look at it almost like as if it's an algorithm. And I look at it like, well, this this negative coming in, like how much how much does it affect me, and how 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 much does it affect the positivity that I put out? Like, does is if I dwell on it, well, then it'll surely me out. But if I just look at it, and if I truly look at myself to say, okay, do they have a point? And if they do have a point, if I am being a like I got a that's a, very important to to be honest about that and to look at that I enjoy a lot of things and what I found that the best way to live my life for me I'm not saying you know other people some people really love their life to sit around and fuck off when I sit around and fuck off I don't like me yeah. I like to get things done but the things that I do they're recreational they're all fun mm -hmm. like Disneyland was fun as fuck with my kids um the Eddie Bravo Invitational was, was fun, fun as fuck. The UFC was fun as f my show, sold out show at the Cod Theater where they do the Cirque du Soleil at, at, at MGM Damn. with Joey Diaz and Jim Norton Friday night. Fun as f those f is fun as f too. Well, those are jobs, right? But those are fun things. Yeah. And you know, training, training is fun. Stand up comedy couldn't be any funner. You know, the only real work work is like you got to discipline myself to sometimes work out when I don't want to, write when I don't want to. If I, but but I. This is this is how I feel. It's harder for me to not do what I'm supposed to do than it is for me to do what I'm supposed to do. Because mm -hmm. if I don't do what I'm supposed to do, then I deal with regret and doubt. <sighs> I don't. I've done it before. I've done it my, a lot of my life. I've felt those feelings. I don't like it. So what I do is I just don't do that. Mm -hmm. I just say, well, what is the difference? If I don't do it, then I'm gonna have to feel like I didn't do it and feel like a loser. So get after it. We were talking before the, this, this podcast about Holly Holmes' victory over Ronda Rousey. And one of the things that we were talking about was that Ronda had this very linear, straightforward attack. You knew she was coming, and Holly is a master at, at countering. So all she had to do was wait and move, and Ronda was coming in one direction. There was no... There was, there was no variation. There was no creativity. There was no creativity. It was a mad bulldog rush that had worked on everybody else before. But she found one person who was a virtuoso at movement. And she needed creativity and it wasn't there. And she needed that experience that came with having faced someone who knew that position and knew, knew, uh, had a, a deep understanding of that movement. And she didn't have that in her repertoire. And so that's the result that we saw like a striker like Anderson Silva is extremely creative. If you watch, she's got a fight versus Tony Fricklin um, in Cage Warriors. Cage Warriors? What the fuck was it called in England? Small organization in England. I think was it was it called Cage, Cage Warriors. Warriors? Yeah. yeah. Where he practiced this step-in uppercut elbow, like a sideways elbow, and his coach was going, you're crazy stop practicing that and he would make his wife hold the pillow because his <laughs> his coach didn't want him to practice it anymore because he thought he was wasting his time so he practiced stepping his wife would hold a pillow for him and he'd step in and throw this uppercut elbow that's what he knocked out Fricklin with yeah. and he obviously yeah. Fricklin was outclassed in that fight but he wanted to make a point and like the front kick that he landed the face of Vitor Belfort Vitor never saw that shit coming because mm -hmm. nobody had done that to him before because nobody had done that in the history of the UFC nobody had ever knocked anybody out with the first kick you learn in martial arts but the creativity to try something like that. He would throw punches to your thigh from standing. He would throw a jab to your thigh. He would throw a crescent kick, an inside crescent kick to your face. Like, what the f***? It was, it was part of what made him such an effective striker is that he threw these things that you just didn't expect him to do. Mm -hmm. People who are in jiu-jitsu and train on a regular basis, they're healthier people. Their egos are healthier, especially men. They're easier to talk to. They're easier to hang out with because they're facing reality on a regular basis. It's something my Taekwondo t teacher told me when I was a little kid that I never forgot was that martial arts are a vehicle for developing your human potential. And nothing in my life has ever put me in face with reality better than jujitsu. Because I think, you know, in life we can all distort our perception of things 
in order to make ourselves more comfortable, in order to make ourselves accept where we are. And there's a lot of people out there that are running around life full of shit. You can't be full of shit when you do jitsu. When you do jujitsu, it's impossible to be full of shit because reality comes at you in the purest form possible. A life or death struggle using your determination, your focus, your techniques, your mind, and your training, and over and over and over again. And it's reality, and if you fuck up and you get caught in a triangle, you've got to tap, and that is the end of the story. It's, it's as real as can get, and that has made me a better person. It has uh, made me a better man, it's made me understand myself, my weaknesses, my strengths, the shit I need to work on. Jiu-Jitsu has been one of the most valuable tools that I've ever had in my life. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you want to get your pick of who I should profile next in the top tens, check out the link in the description and go and cast your vote. I also want to give a quick shout out to Gene Friedling. Gene, thank you so much for picking up a copy of my book, Your One Word, and posting that awesome picture on Instagram. I really appreciate the support and I hope you're enjoying the read. So thank you guys again for watching. I believe in you. I hope you continue to believe in yourself and whatever your one word is. Much love. I'll see you soon. It's very rare that someone is successful that doesn't have a, a crazy schedule. Yes. And if they are, they're not going to appreciate it. Mm -hmm. They're going to, you know, like, but it's, it's all like, what, it, what is where you're at? Like, is where you're at where you want to be? Like, are you enjoying it? Mm -hmm. Because I'm... What, what I'm happy about the most is that I enjoy what I do. So when I'm doing, like if I was working as a CEO of some corporation or something like that, and I was putting all these crazy hours, like the same kind of hours I put in now, the same kind of effort, I'd probably be a miserable, drunk, pill-popping psychopath who's just looking to escape and go bang hookers or something. I'd be looking yeah. for some sort of a release.